Yes, I've done it again. Sold a tent, bought a tent. Uh, this time I've decided to go with a wee Salawa Light Trek 1. I've sold the uh, Six Moon Design Lunar Solo to try this for a change. It just took my fancy when I was in Tizos and I uh, thought it was relatively cheap but nicely designed. So I'm going to give it a wee go. Uh, quite hefty. Uh, three pole construction geodesic or semi geodesic. So look, two kilograms. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a bit of a bind. But we'll see if we can lighten it by hook or crook. Comes in quite a nice stuff sack actually with a draw cord. Opens in the long, uh, the long length of it. So and in instructions, compression straps, which quite good as well. So in terms of package size, it's quite small. So what do you get in the packet? Let's have a wee look. Uh, four Danny Magai lines, three poles. The diameter of the poles, I think, is. 7.9 mil, 10 y, uh, are they y pegs? Yeah, y pegs with pullers that are actually very, very light, slightly shorter than normal, but they're very light. Uh, repair patches, seam sealant, tube sleeve, uh, the usual stuff sacks and the like. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put it up now and see how it looks. Got a very similar pole system to the Hilleberg. Uh, you put sleeves which you put the poles into and then it clips the remainder. Plus the end is already attached to the fly so it looks pretty good. Um, suitable for British conditions anyway, makes it a bit easier. Okay, so we've got it up. Uh, it took a wee bit of a f longer than I thought, just because the guy lines are a wee bit of a faff first time around. But that's them now on, so I wouldn't have to remove them. It looks quite strong. I think that's where the weight is. With the, it's quite a lot of metal in it. Um, I put, got them to put it up in the shop for me, and I was kind of intrigued by the design. I think it has strong points and possibly weak points, but um, it's actually quite a cheap tent. It's about 162. For uh, a tent, I think it's rated to 90 kilometers an hour when tested properly. So it should be fairly robust and probably good for three seasons, maybe stretching it a wee bit into four and for typical Scottish conditions. But uh, all I'll do is we'll get a wee look inside and see what it's like inside. You can see it's quite narrow but and relatively tall, but it seems quite rigid. Here's one of the intriguing, strangest features about the tent is the lack of a vestibule. What you do is you can just about store your boots in there if you're lucky but the pack would have to go in the inner tent and for cooking what you do is you detach the inner and pull it back towards the centre I'll show you that in just a second but there's Fastex buckles which allow you just to move the whole inner tent back the way and then cook and store in there undercover It's an interesting kind of idea I don't mind it because it's a very small footprint um, and I quite like that if you're looking you know, in certainly mountainous situations with a lot of rock it makes it because it's self-standing just a wee bit easier to pitch in place. Just unzip the inner and it has a wee mesh pocket somewhere in here. You can find it. Yeah, just down in, down inside here where the, the uh, tent door goes. So that can be tucked away which is quite good. The door is good actually in terms of the flexibility. You can unzip it from any kind of angle. Take it from the left, take it from the right, top or bottom. And then again there's a wee sleeve at the bottom left here, a mesh pocket where you can tuck the door away which just keeps that quite tidy as well, keeps it out of the mud which is pretty good as is the inner door. The only thing I would say, I'm just looking at the inner before I go in, is there's no if you use that wee pocket on the bottom left there's nowhere else in terms of mesh pockets for storage which seems a wee bit of an oversight. I'll double check that but it doesn't look like it. Uh, inner looks quite high in the middle but low at the front funnily enough at the door end First time in the inner, and it's uh, oh, it's quite quite low at the front, but as you move back, it gets higher. 
reminds me of the TNF West one, which had most of its head height in the centre point of the tent. I guess it's probably just for wind shedding again because it's meant to be a very stable tent. And now I'm in there, there's definitely no mesh pocket. Well, there's a couple of hanging loops and a wee top vent related to the uh, back vent on the fly sheet, which is zippable and you can access it from the inside. Close it for snow and rain, which is good. So, again, a kind of nod towards winter and alpine use. Uh, initial impressions of the inner quite tight in terms of the width of it, but it looks very long. Yeah, it's tons of tons of length, just a bit narrow. We'll try uh, unplugging this inner and see how easy it would be to cook. So there you are with the other hanging back. It takes a good uh, three, four feet back to the high point, and you could just sit in the ground sheet and cook away, or just remove the inner actually. Put the inner up later if conditions were really damp, or you were on your second and third day, and you were trying to keep the inner dry in its own right. So not bad. I think uh, most of the time when you're packed, we'd have to sit at the back of the tent. It does feel long. Um, so you probably have to store it internally, unless you're not bored and put it outside. As you can see, it fits the big Neo Air okay. Uh, probably about a foot at the bottom there left in terms of length. So it's a long enough tent for the tall person. That's pretty good. The initial impressions when you get in are relatively narrow. So not one for those of a wide girth, shall we say. Uh, enough head height in the middle. There's actually a wee vent here, but 90% of it actually is probably solid. There's a vent at the door which can't be covered, um, but it feels very warm in here to be fair. And the walls are all solid. So again, a nod towards three to four season backpacking, I would say, in terms of retaining heat. And you've got a triple tie-in point up here just to put up a clothesline or hang a torch, candles, etc. Now that I'm sitting in the inner and I'm just looking at what, what you call the remainder of a vestibule, uh, probably about, I don't know, foot 18 inches deep by the width of the tent. So you can see my shoes fit in. You would probably feed your pack in just standing and no more, or just leave a few bits and pieces that you wanted to keep under cover, like your stove. Uh, but yeah, not a lot of room in that respect. Again, in keeping with Hilleberg design, I noticed that they've kind of, well, not stolen, but this is similar. They have a fairly thick uh, rubberized seal going around the door, which reminds me a lot of Hilleberg zip covers as well. So there you go, people. That's the first impressions of the Light Trek one from Salawa or Salua. Somebody will correct me. I have no idea how to say it. But anyway, £162, including 10% discount at Taizos. Seems to be a very strong three to four season solo tent. Enough head height, but narrow. Very stable though, or appears to be. And it's been wind tunnel tested to 90k, uh, which I think is force 10 in miles an hour, or Beaufort scale, I should say. Um, semi geodesic, self standing, and it looks quite strong. So we'll get it out and we'll give it a good test, uh, proper wild camp and I'll put up another video shortly but there's very little material about on this one so hopefully it'll be useful to any other potential buyers if you have any questions get in touch as I say I've only had this about an hour or two but I'll shortly have a bit more experience with it and be able to tell you more thanks again for watching